So this is the brand new Lenovo Z13, ThinkPad Z13, or as in the States, they call it the Z13, America. But it is a beautiful laptop with an AMD processor and probably one of the nicest looking AMD laptops I've seen this year. Okay, it's using this vegan leather on top. It's not made of actual vegans, but it is vegan leather, so it's not made from a cow, and it feels very fantastic to touch. I hope over a long period of time, this starts to wear in and gives you that really cool leather look. It's not too flexy on the top. It feels super solid. It's just under three pounds. It has this beautiful brushed trim surrounding the sides of the laptop. It's more of a golden copper color. It's not as smooth on the edges like the Yoga 9i. Like if you've ever seen the Yoga 9i, they brushed it. It's circular. It kind of just feels better in your hand. This is a bit more sharp. It has a black bottom lid. Obviously this is made out of all metal. You have a fancy trimming on the top where the camera area rests. The unfortunate part is the port situation. It only comes with two with one USB four port or whenever it gets the update to USB four port on the left hand side and then another USB port on the right hand side. And of course there's a power button. Now this laptop just feels premium, but the one reason why I wanted to review this thing was because of this touchpad. This is not any ordinary touchpad. This is using Lenovo's force pad technology. The same concept and idea behind the technology in MacBook Airs and MacBook Pros. This is hands down the best touchpad I've used on a Windows laptop. It is so comparable to a MacBook Air's touchpad that it's scary. I would say the MacBook Air or Pro, whatever one, is probably like 1% better. It's, it's very minor. And I hope in the future that Lenovo uses this technology on all their laptops going forward because it just makes moving your finger around the screen so much more accurate. You know, it just feels good. The downfall though is they're still using the nipple and it doesn't feel the same as proper buttons like on other ThinkPads. It takes some time getting used to. I think they did a good job all things considering, but if you want that proper nipple feeling with the proper buttons, then I still think like the carbon will do a better job with the actual physical buttons. Now, when I first started using this, it didn't feel responsive. And I was like, this is not as responsive as a MacBook. But if you go into the window setting, you can increase the amount of vibration that the force pad gives back to you. And as soon as I did that, and then I lowered the sensitivity by a little bit, it was almost identical to a MacBook Air. It was super scary. Now sticker placement's a little weird. Instead of placing them on top or beside each other, they're diagonal. And I think they're trying to include some sort of synchronized swimming technique in the sticker industry. I think this method is called the swimming dolphin. Now the typing experience on this is fantastic. The travel distance is good enough. It feels very clicky. It has a nice sound. And the spacing between the keys is perfect. Unfortunately, there's no numpad. I mean, this is a 13 inch laptop. It would look really weird if you squished one on here. And of course you have all the ThinkPad icons at the top. If you want to quickly mute a call or disable your webcam. Easily openable with one hand. The actual display goes this far back, which is pretty standard for most clamshell laptops. The display itself has fairly thin bezels. You can buy it with a high 3K or 2K plus display, or this one, which is a 1920 by 1200. It's all 16 by 10, so you get that extra vertical space. The bezels are fairly thin. You have the lip at the top, so you can house the webcam. This is a full HD webcam. This is what it looks like. It's not too bad. Not as good as the HP QHD webcams I've seen, but better than the old 720p ones. Now, the actual display gets really good color accuracy. It has good color gamut, and the brightness is more than acceptable. It is touch, so if you want to use your fingers, you're more than welcome to. The only thing I wish is that they included a dongle in the box. I know MacBooks don't, but I feel like this laptop is being really focused towards executives. And executives go into meetings and they need dongles so they can connect to HDMI ports to show their presentations. So a dongle in the box would have been appreciated. Now what's good about this laptop is the AMD processor inside of here. This is a 6000 series U processor from AMD using their integrated 680M GPU has 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM and a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. I like this processor, you know, it, it performs very well. You know, it doesn't have as fast single core clock speeds as the Intel stuff that's on the market, but I think most executives don't care about that kind of stuff. They just want a reliable laptop. And that's exactly what this processor does. It gives you good performance for the tasks you're doing and it's reliable. If you're using this for office work or you're gonna have tons of Chrome tabs open, I didn't have any issues with that. It ran nice and smooth and it performed 
worked very, very well. If you're using this for a little bit of creative work, I still think you're better off buying something with a dedicated GPU, specifically if you're doing any video editing. But for Photoshop, this processor is more than capable. It's more than powerful enough to handle any photos you decide to throw at it. Now for the best experience, I would leave it on intelligent cooling. And if you ever need an extra juice from the CPU, go into your window settings and change it to best performance. It will push the CPU to its full potential if you're doing anything really, really demanding. Now, if you do this, fan noise will go over 40 decibels, but not by much. The other two profiles keep fan noise below 40, so you can always have a quiet experience. In terms of heat, it did very well. The AMD processor ran fairly cool while keeping the clock speeds relatively high. And the keyboard deck did hover around 40 degrees Celsius, which is not bad, but I would have loved it to be just under 40 instead. Now the bottom lid, as you can see, does pick up a lot of fingerprints. It gets dirty very fast, but thankfully you're not looking at this all day. You're looking at that vegan cover, which looks a lot cleaner, but IT professionals who are fixing this or upgrading this for their team are gonna appreciate this because all these screws are captive, meaning they don't fall off when you unscrew them. Internally, not much is really upgradable, right? Like everything is soldered onto the motherboard except for the drive. This is a smaller form factor. It's not a 2280, so drive speeds are not as fast as the Gen 4 speeds we're used to, but it's very reminiscent of last year's Gen 3 speeds. Wi-Fi card is 6E, it is soldered onto the motherboard, but you do get a 51 watt hour battery. And I got really good battery life with this guy nine hours of use before needing to charge, which is fantastic for this product. Honestly, I love this thing, but it's $2,100. And for people like me and you who are in the normal world, the consumer world, there's better value out there. This is for the corporation, the business that has a contract with Lenovo, but requires Pro processors or V Pro processors if they're using Intel. But they also want to order something very classy with good battery life that feels good to type on, that makes a presence for the executive team. And if you're an IT manager looking for new laptops for the CEO or the VP of IT, then I definitely put this thing on your short list because it's hands down one of the prettiest, well-performing AMD Ultrabooks I've reviewed this year. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you like it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.